SPF uh, in different constituencies. But having said that, Mr. Speaker, I will not uh, speak too much to a lot of the issues that members have spoken, but I just want to say that I indeed agree with member that CDF has enhanced development in our constituencies. Mr. Speaker, one of the things that was, com that was very common, especially in rural constituencies like mine, like mine was mud walled classrooms. With CDF, mud walled classrooms have become a thing of the past. Mr. Speaker, the other thing that I would want to praise CDF for is enhanced equity. Mr. Speaker, in the past, what governments would do is if you didn't vote in for a government, and I've actually seen a statement to that effect very recently, then development would not go your side of the world. But with CDF, whether you support the government or not, you now have funds through which you can support. And through that, Mr. Speaker, it also enhances democracy, which is also a good thing. Mr. Speaker, however, one of the things that we need to mention about CDF is that we now need to move from e equity to equality. Mr. Speaker, why do I say that? One of the things that a lot of the public would challenge us in relation to my good uh, uh, friend, the late uh, Bernard Okot of uh, Kibra, was that people would tell you that look at the kind of classes that Honorable uh, Bernard is building, because he would be doing storied buildings while you, you do one or two classes. But what people didn't realize is Kibra has nine schools and we have over 100 schools. So how do you compete against nine established schools against over 100, almost 200 schools in the rural? And then some of them don't even have schools. You're actually starting schools afresh. afresh. Like I've said here, one of the islands, I'm the one who built the first class ever, uh, called Sukru Island. Mr. Speaker, because of that, we need to move more towards equality in provision of CDF funds and not only equity. Right now, CDF uses equity and not equality. Mr. Speaker, I'd also want to say that CDF is one of the best, best managed funds, if not actually the best managed fund in the country. Mr. Speaker, again, members have spoken to the issue, and my, my chairman of budget has spoken to the issue of, uh, I think uh, CDF is actually audited by three audits, auditors. And Mr. Speaker, I, I usually find it laughable when I hear people saying that CDF is um, uh, uh, the pocket change of a member of parliament. If it was actually pocket change, with a very enlightened populace, you are not likely to come back. You'll never be uh, elected if CDF was actually pocket change. What I want to encourage, there's a team that was actually doing um, a report on amendment, proposed amendment to the constitution. And what I would want to encourage, I wasn't in that committee, but I, what I want to encourage is we need to bring a bold proposal that changes the architecture of governance so that we don't just think in the traditional way of governance and we come up with a sui generis system that works for Kenya so that we don't say that we have uh, the three arms of government and each of them must have this system working. Why should we kill a system that is working well, that many countries are actually trying to emulate? Why? Because some French guy uh, made some comment about separation of powers years ago. If that separation of powers doesn't serve us well right now, then let's do what works for us. We are a poor suffering uh, country, and what we need is development, and CDF has worked. And contrary to what people say, actually, it is making a lot of difference in people's life. Mr. Speaker, I want to just finish by saying, before I finish, I actually want to say that we are focused a lot on the brick and mortar issues. But CDF also actually has done a lot on software in terms of mentorship and all that. Suba North, we are just about to launch two books for our high school students and for our university students our, and our program, Mama Wina, which is a mentorship program for students. It's both scholarship and mentorship program that helps produce uh, professionals within the constituency. So it's not just about brick and mortar. I'm just regretting, Mr. S uh, Speaker, that I wish CDF had taken on a lot more in terms of responsibility 
and taken away some of the responsibility from the county government constitutionally because a lot of the county governments have failed us. They have a lot more resources than us, but in terms of the products, it's actually embarrassing. Uh, we, we sometimes have to uh, uh, be innovative and creative to meet demands which are actually uh, county government demands because they are not meeting them and the communities need them. So finally, Mr. Speaker, one of the things I want to say in terms of the audits, I want to say that because this CDF helps a lot of people, I want to encourage auditors that they need to be serious when they are auditing CDF. Let them not play monkey business with CDF. Mr. Speaker, in this country, it is very difficult to be ethical and to be a person of integrity. The people who are ethical and persons of integrity are the ones who are hounded by these uh, auditors. Mr. Speaker, I think I've shared with you before, when I first got into CDF, and I was informed that there could be a case of misappropriation. So being the nice ethical person I am, I came and reported and asked that my fund account manager be removed and requested for an internal audit. I have regretted to date why I bothered to be a good citizen. Because we were actually given a false audit, creating fake schools, creating purported misappropriation, mis uh, and then different government agencies that are supposed to be the ones that are ensuring that people do the right things are busy following you, asking you to give them bribes of three million. I told them to go to hell. And Mr. Speaker, I have actually, we were with you when I took this matter to the ESCC. I am actually sad to date that that matter has not been followed up. When you give a wrong and false audit, you say that a school that exists in Suba North does not exist. It's an imaginary school. And we give you bank records that shows that it was given money, merely because we refused to give you three million. Honorable members of parliament here, shy, they don't want to say the things that go on in CDF in terms of our oversight role. Why? Because you know if you speak, you will be targeted. Me, I'm willing to be targeted so that things can go right. We are tired of being asked for money. Auditors start auditing, and the first thing they tell you is bring up front so much money. For what? For nothing. And if you don't give, you are, you are, you are, results are qualified. So continue qualifying, but you need to do the right thing. I will speak the correct things until I leave this house. Even if I am sacrificed for speaking the right thing, I will but we need to do the right thing that serves Kenyans. Because we came here to serve Kenyans, not to take away money from Kenyans. So I'd want to encourage, uh, first of all, the CDF office in Nairobi to look into how that audit was done so wrong that it is even embarrassing. When I actually showed them with evidence and proof that all these things that are being given here are false, to date, nothing has been taken against the auditor who did that report. What about the Ethics uh, and Anti-Corruption Commission? They have not done anything. Instead, what you get is DCI, other agencies following you, asking you for bribes every now and again. And I want to tell them, shame on you. And the next time you call me, I'm going to name, mention you here by name. Stop following us here for bribes. Uh, if we don't speak these things, nobody will. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, I support. But let the auditors know that their work is to serve Kenyans, not to harass Kenyans. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Mugi Odiambo Mapona for that good direction in terms of how we should audit. The Honorable Rashid.